so in America, I was an artist, and I really had like no boundaries. So I really did suffer because it was like there was there was you know there was no truth. You know what I'm saying? If I wanted to have two girlfriends, the only people telling me I shouldn't have two girlfriends was you know whatever. So I was very two girlfriends. Conf no, I never had two girlfriends. I'm just saying. I'm just no. I'm just saying. It was yeah. It was. Yeah, it was no, like it was like is, uh, it was like delusion on top of delusion on top of delusion. And when I looked into stuff, you know, I looked into Buddhism and everything but Judaism, of course, because you know I'm already Jewish, so it's not working. Because <laughs> I'm already Jewish, and I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very weird when I saw the Torah because the real Torah, you know, I had a bar mitzvah, it was beautiful, but my rabbi didn't wear a kippah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, it was like totally reformed, and uh, it, it was just stuff like that that was very confusing because you have the truth and it's real. You know, you come to Israel for the first time, you come to Tzfat and you feel it. And you know that it's real. However, the reality of the truth of the Torah was confusing on the reflection of people's behaviors. Because you're like, oh, if it's true, then that means everyone here must be happy and perfect. And that's, that's where I got really confused because I wanted to escape from the, the galut from Egypt, America, what I like to call Egypt, this is my America. I wanted to escape from all the pain and the confusion there, but when I ran here and ran to Torah and tried to like get an, oh, if I just start putting on tefillin every day, I'll be infinitely happy or whatever, it wasn't working. So it's like Hashem, you know, showed me that in a very harsh way. So I, I really tell kids, I'm like, you know, come here and be you here and let here evolve you out of the, the you that is a lie, you know. Um, Do you feel uh, manipulated by, uh, by America as a type of, almost like a type of Babylon or slavery in a way, spiritual slavery? Oh yeah, absolutely, but it's also out of control, like you could also get manipulated, you know, I, I, I know Jews here that grew up with too much force, you know, the Torah, you have to do this, and you have to do this, and you have to do this, and then they want to go to America. <laughs> So it's also a perspective, you know, everything is, I mean, it's, I, I guess what I'd like to say is that there is a finite truth where you can say, wow, that's the anchor, and that is the Torah. But all the other stuff, it's like the way you were raised, the way this, the circumstances, it's all a lot of human behavior and confusion. Obviously, when Mashiach comes, we'll be able to access the finite truth. So in a way, it's, it can be confusing because... You know, you listen to one person, he says this, listen to another person, he says this, one person's a little more religious, they hold by this law, then the next guy, you know, says you can't do this, and you can't do this, and even today, I still see that, so I, I always try to stay grounded, you know, and spot, you can easily float away, I'm sure you've been here long enough. But it's important to remember that there's 70 places to Torah. Yeah, see, I didn't see that. <laughs> it was very... Yeah. That's one of the first things that I learned when I came to Israel. That there yeah. are 70 faces to Torah, so it makes it easier to look at different approaches to Torah and say, that's right. their approach, but my my need, which yeah. I, at that time I wouldn't have said my neshama, but my need is for something different. Right, now right. I say it's my neshama's need, that right, I right. need something different. Yeah, and, yeah uh, and that's, that's something that I think perhaps maybe it's not expressed enough, because like, like there was a million faces to America. I mean, it was just unlimited. So seventy maybe seems like one to me, perhaps, because uh, you know, like when if I meet if I meet someone from Kabad, they're very adamant about that's the right way. And if you oh, meet yeah. someone from this group, they're very adamant. When I was in Jerusalem, it was very group oriented, and in Sfad, it's a little bit more like one group. So I think that's why I lived in Jerusalem for a year before that. So there was something. Uh, there's something to be said about people getting confused, you know, and I see, I, I went to yeshiva in Jerusalem, and I'd meet a kid, he'd be there for a week, and then he'd start throwing out all his clothes, <laughs> and get like a black coat, you know, and then like two weeks later, he'd go back to New York or wherever, so, you know, it's, it's confusing. You know? where, where is the balance point for you, and where what was it, because your, your paintings are very uh, fantastical, so you're talking before about how... Um, you know what what is reality or what isn't, but very much in your paintings is is a non-real world and not a non-real imagination. And and um, how, how did you sort of what was the process sort of dealing dealing with that energy and that mind? That's a very very interesting question. Hopefully the guy will stop uh, blowing his uh, chauffeur. Not that I don't love hearing. It. Um, you're you're an art therapist. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you been an art therapist for? 
Eight years. Yeah, and you're Israeli? You're from Israel? Yeah, Tel Aviv. Echut says that he works mostly with um, children and youth mm -hmm. who have learning disabilities, mm -hmm. maybe dyslexia, maybe other kinds of concentration problems, mm -hmm. or sometimes uh, behavioral problems and um, psychiatric problems? No problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, no, I've, I've lived it. I've been diagnosed, so you can read it about in my biography, I've been diagnosed for everything. From, you know, they're all wrong, you know, bipolar, schizophrenic, uh, delusional, uh, tried every medication. So it very interests me, you know, like, I don't know if I'm equipped to be a therapist, this is, but uh, uh, it's a very beautiful thing. Medical art. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, amazing. Refuah uh, omanuti. Uh, yeah. Right. And I have a lot more faith in like Israeli. Yeah. Yeah. When I got into Torah, I, you know, I met therapists that were Jews, that were holding by Torah law, so it wasn't so confusing. I see a talk therapist once a week, and just the other day he told me a Torah law in therapy when I'm talking about my career or whatever. So, you know, it's, it's things like that that America doesn't have. There's no direction. You know, in Torah, it's like you're going to the Torah. The far outness of my art was mostly due to escaping the reality of America. America was like in a prison, so I always wanted to create an alternate world. My stuff was weird and weird and dark because I was trapped. So over time, I started to, you know, tone down a little bit, make happier themes and stuff like that. And now that I'm in Israel, I'm slowly incorporating Torah. But I'm not being so forceful with it, you know. Like, when I, when I was forceful with it, I was, like, painting, like, a rabbi, like, in a black, black and white suit or something. I have a, a relative of mine uh, that I drew. I'm actually related to the Baruch HaShulchan, you know. <laughs> He's the he Arach Hashulchan. He's a commentator. Shulchan Aruch. He he wrote the Arach Hashulchan, which was the first common commentary on the Kitzur Shulchan Aruch. What's your relationship to animal symbols? That's also something very common in. Um, <laughs> the truth is, is that they used to just be mutated creatures, and after a while, it's like I toned down a little bit and decided that animals are nice too. <laughs> if it was just up to me, everything would be mutants, you know? Everything would have beaks growing out of their eyes and stuff like that. But that's just because uh, I'm just overly creative. But I think, I think people relate to animals a little bit more. And I like, I, I like to relate to people, even though as far out as I am. So perhaps maybe it's a, a way for me to relate my art to people more. Like this school bus, uh, like that sort of does symbolize a disturbing element of America, especially, you know, yeah. thinking about that's the recent actually, events. Yeah, and, yeah. And how kids kill kids and stuff in America. Oh and yeah, stuff. you know it's funny. I mean, I did that. I did that like years and years and years before any of those real incidents happened. You know, like Columbine and stuff like that. But I, I grew up in that world. I mean, thank God I wasn't in the genre of actually taking action to that. You know, me it was just like I'll just draw it. And I'm sure there's millions of people that actually just draw the fantasy instead of uh, actually doing like the thing that happened with the Batman. Like, there's, there's a thousand kids that are just as impressed as him that are taking it out in sports or taking it out in creativity, not actually being insane. <laughs> you know, this was like my way, you know, it was, I was in school. I wasn't thrilled about school. You know, I was in a public Christian school system. And I actually did go to a school, St. Andrews, and it was a Christian school. That was actually a private school. And it was, you know, they, they made us go to church once a week. This is like, you know, I mean... You know what I'm saying? This is like the world I grew up in, so school didn't thrill me. So that's, you know, and I actually did that. I did that right when I got out of college, actually. Did, did, did Torah, um, what, did, what did Torah sort of bring you? What, what did it do for your art? Um, well, Torah is, is like the, the center of the universe. It's the anchor. So finally, I have a direction to go. And even though it's not always easy and not always perfect, and I'm a human and you're a human, and, you know, this way, that way, that type of thing. But um, uh, Torah is like infinite. It's the infinite right direction. You know, wherever you're coming from, you can go to Torah. So hopefully over time, the world's going to start doing that.